what is the highest ISO value that you need or use on a regular basis? Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video I want to talk about high ISO values and are they really necessary or useful in photography. And I started thinking about this uh, when I was looking for sample, high ISO sample pictures in my current Lightroom library that has only about 6,000 photos since last November. But those photos represent really well uh, what I do these days. And I was surprised not to find many high ISO pictures. And by high ISO, I mean ISO values higher than 6400. High ISO performance has been a major topic ever since digital cameras started to become popular sometime in early 2000, something like 18 or 20 years ago. It's been a major topic for discussion, it's been a major topic also for some argument, and it's been uh, one way to rate cameras, put them in some sort of order. And also every reviewer or every review has some sort of opinion or test uh, about the high ISO performance of the camera uh, that is the, the subject of the, that particular review or test. It's also been a major marketing argument, at least in the past, but uh, it's still being used today and uh, those uh, really super high ISO values or numbers they look good in, in marketing or on the camera packaging or on the box or whatever if it says maximum ISO 400,000 or whatever the current cameras can do but my experience is that those highest ISO numbers or values regardless of the camera they are only usable in emergencies. If you really need to get the shot and the quality doesn't really matter as long as the viewer can recognize what's in the picture. And my other experience is like I found out when I was uh, checking out my current Lightroom catalog is that uh, I don't really use super high ISO values. I don't really need them and um, that's why I wanted to talk about it and I also would like to hear your experience down in the comments below if you use any uh, super high ISO values like 25,000 or 50,000 on a regular basis. Of course it's sometimes it's nice to experiment a little bit and test or try those high ISO values but uh, do you really need them or use them on a regular basis like every day or, or often? And as always, it's good to distinguish recreational and commercial photography because those two are different worlds. Uh, commercial photographers, uh, they are not taking pictures for themselves when they are on assignment. And they also can't fail. They have to be able to pull off the shot or shots no matter what. But recreational photographers, they can always uh, decide not to take the photo if the situation is too challenging or whatever. And therefore the requirements for gear and uh, everything are very different for those two types of photography. That's good to remember always. Anyway, when I was browsing my current Lightroom catalog, I realized that most of my pictures are shot between ISO 100 and 3200. And then there are some at the 6400 and higher than that. But pretty much all of those are some sort of experiments that I've done for some of my videos or trying if I can make a shot in a certain situation. But uh, I never really needed to get that shot or I never really needed that high ISO number. And I think it's pretty funny that the ISO range that I use today is pretty much the same that I have used ever since I started photography sometime in the 1970s. 
back in the film days, ISO 3200 was pretty much the upper limit. Yes, there were some special like um, processing um, methods to go even higher, but uh, the practical range was pretty much between 100 and 3200. And um, I don't know if that affects my current uh, shooting style or why I stick to that limit, but I don't think I do it intentionally. I just uh, shoot the way I shoot and my ISO is in auto most of the time. And I let the camera choose whatever would be the suitable ISO in any given situation. So I'm not uh, intentionally limiting the high, highest ISO value to any particular value. And one other thing that I have realized or learned is that it's not that extreme low light situation that usually requires the highest possible ISO. It's usually some moderate low light situation that requires high shutter speed to be able to freeze action. Then you may have to use really high ISO to be able to use that high uh, or fast shutter speed to be able to freeze motion. If it's really pitch black, if you've ever been in the middle of the forest on a cloudy night, uh, let's say in Finland in November when there's no snow and everything is super, super dark, you can't take any pictures no matter what. It doesn't matter if your camera can go up to a million ISO, you just can't take any pictures because there is no light. You need some sort of light to to bring out the shapes in the scene or subject, whatever it is. If there's no light, then there is no shape or no picture to be taken. But if you need to freeze action in some sort of uh, moderately low light, like in normal room lighting inside, like here right now, and if I need something like uh, 1 over 500, 1 over 1000 uh, shutter speed, I have to use quite high ISO values to be able to do that, even if I have a fast lens. So in my opinion, it's more like the action photography that requires higher ISO values or wildlife photography. Sometimes you have to shoot, uh, I don't know, birds or some other wildlife in low light situations like uh, late evening or very early in the morning when the light levels are low, then you may need some pretty high ISO values to be able to freeze uh, the bird in flight or whatever. I don't do that kind of photography, but uh, I've seen some <laughs> EXIF data um, with the pictures and uh, I can imagine that it can sometimes be challenging and uh, you know, requires a lot from your gear and um, everything. Now that I really think about it, with modern cameras, I think I really appreciate the flexibility to be able to choose whatever ISO value I want more than those uh, really crazy high ISO values. But of course, it would be nice to have a camera that has uh, the same signal to noise ratio regardless of the ISO, so I would get the same sort of noise regardless of the ISO number value that I use. By the way, I'm not too um, allergic to noise. I don't mind if there's some noise in, in my pictures. It's not that I would want every picture to be super smooth and clean without any noise. This is not about that at all. But like I said, at the start of this video. This is only my experience um, in my photography and I don't expect everyone to shoot like me and to have the same or similar experience. You probably have some other opinions or other experiences with high ISO photography, so please do leave a comment down below and let me hear your thoughts on this. Would you need or would you want to have usable super high ISO values like ISO 100,000 or even higher, would that make a difference in your photography? I hope that you found this video useful or entertaining or thought-provoking and if you did, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thanks and I'll definitely see you in the next video.